we're going to talk today about the PL259 connector. This connector is designed for use with connecting an antenna to a VHF radio. Here is what it looks like as a completed assembly on a cable. I'm going to take you through the different parts. This is the end part that goes on the end of the cable. This is a adapter to adapt to different types of cables, uh, examples like RG213, RG8X, RG59. This is actually for RG8X. And this is the collar that secures the connector to the back of the radio. Very important thing is when you're putting the connector on, you want to make sure that your adapter and your collar are put on the cable first before you solder this to the end of the cable. Putting a PL259 connector is not as difficult as it seems. It's actually quite straightforward. Again, as I said before, you want to make sure that your adapter and your, your locking collar are put on the cable before you try to put the connector on. First thing you want to do is cut back the outer jacket on your cable. You can use a razor knife or a, a sharp pair of scissors to do that. You want to cut back approximately three quarters of an inch of the outer jacket, taking care not to cut the shield underneath. I like to just roll it a little, make sure you get a little bit of a cut going on in here, and then you can actually pull this apart here. Notice that the inside shield has not been compromised in any way. Once that's done, you've exposed the inside shielding, you want to take the inside shielding and fold it back over the outside jacket, like so. The outside, you, the reason you do this is that the outside shield will be showing up through these tiny little holes that you will be soldering at, later on in the project. Next thing you want to do is you want to cut off the insulating dielectric. Again, taking care not to cut the center pin, the center conductor here. What I like to do is I like to twist this as I'm pulling it off because that actually neatly twists the cable so it makes it nice and neat. Like so. What you'll see is that I've taken the time and I've trimmed the shield back so that it doesn't uh, interfere with the threads on the, on the adapter. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to tin the center, center conductor with some solder. Okay, now that we've got the center, center conductor soldered, we're going to take the, the end fitting itself and we're going to mate it to the adapter. Being careful, we screw it down till it's snug. What you want to achieve is you want to see shield through the, each of these holes which you'll be dropping solder in. That'll give you an electrical as well as a mechanical connection for your, for your, uh, adapt, your, your end fitting. Then what we're going to do is dribble solder down to the center pin here. You want to fill this up so that, again, you get a good electrical and mechanical uh, connection. It always helps, too, to have something like these Radio Shack uh, arms here to keep your work uh, in place while you're soldering, or it, it helps to have an extra pair of hands. So what we're going to do now is we're going to dribble some solder down on our center pin here. fingers straight. Like so. Next it's time to What are we doing with it right now? What we're doing now is we're drip, we're rolling solder into these holes so we can we can solder the 
shield to the ground side of the PL259. Now, do you have to do all three of those holes in the connector or just one or two? It's always good to do all of the holes. There's four, there are four holes here. Although I suppose you could do it, do just one, but I like to do all four. Now in soldering this, do you want to heat up the connector and then dribble the solder in? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, what we're doing now is we're heating, trying to heat up the shield. The shield, okay. And we're going to roll the solder in here. One of the problems that you run into, though, is you may heat it up so much that you end up melting your dielectric or your outer case dielectric uh, being what that's the that's the uh, the the foam the foam insulation between your shield and your uh, center pin okay so we're gonna use our classic Simpson 260 meter to make sure we don't have and we're good we don't have any so uh, the, uh, the needles indicating needles no indicating resistance no resistance which means you haven't shorted out your center pin with your shield And that's a good solder joint.